Sunday school class. Um, right now we're going to continue with Colossians chapter 2. 2 verses left. Verse 2, verse 3. So left 2. And um, let's see one more thing. Richard had asked me about work day and we will be discussing leadership group about if we schedule work day on Saturday or not. Oh, yep. No, Usher needs to come uh, for not tied but for poor. Oh, yeah. Okay, so don't forget that. Hold that. <coughs> okay, so, so later if I forget, you wave it around, okay? Show me, okay? <laughs> okay. So that that's for poor. Separate why? Because we have our ties over here. So the tithes support our budget things. The poor finances separate, and Lord's Supper once a month. We special uh, collect for the poor. So if we finish lecture now, then we'll go ahead and call Ken Usher to come with that. So don't let me forget. Okay, so you can move it around. Don't forget. Okay. All right. <coughs> Colossians chapter two, and verse two, and Colossians chapter two, and verse three. That's correct. Right. Lord, help us now as we focus on what is happening with this change from chapter 1 where we see Paul start the struggle, the wrestling related with the church. Help us now see as we change and we enter into chapter 2 what is happening next, understand more clearly, ready for next week, and then we can go ahead and proceed more. Now, help us to understand your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, 
with the two sister churches in Turkey. We have the city, which is called Colossae. They have their black sheet there. They have their mountain volcano there. They have uh, different kinds of things from our culture, not to say from Asian culture there. And then 10 miles over here, we have a sister named city, L A C I D. That city here, if you remember, is in the book of Revelation. That is a worse church with problems because they are not hot to God. They're not cold with God. They're just in the middle. And God tells them, remember, vomit you from the mountain. Make you off. They are lukewarm related with inside the church. Okay, so there's two sister churches. Paul is far away from Rome in jail. He writes this letter and sends it to the Colossian church here. He tells them, I'm concerned not only about you, but I'm concerned about them. All the churches have not yet met them, I have not met you. These two churches I'm concerned about. So these two sister churches we talk about Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. I've not yet met, I've not yet seen face to face, but I'm concerned that their hearts become comforted. That their hearts become knit together in love. And that their hearts have all the riches, fully knowing the understanding to recognizing the mystery of God and the Father related to Christ. So there are three points that we're going to get. Okay? So you remember this morning we talked about the team here and they're struggling, they have their equipment, they have their practice, and they have the opportunity for planning. These three areas here. Now that is the church that is fit and ready. Now here, Paul is saying that church is not yet ready. That church is not yet matching. They're not yet fit. So we need God to invest in them three things. The first is the word comfort. Okay? So please open to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 1. Far away to jail, and 
conforms all. I have some concerns about the church here. We have false doctrine from legalists, rural people is creeping in. We have false doctrine from people who really are inventing ideas of special wisdom, special knowledge, and they're creeping in the church. I have these two. And in the middle here, I have people that are getting pulled over here. I have people getting pulled over here. It's dividing the church. It will destroy the church. I don't want to see it go down. So Paul now counsels with pastor, pastors. He tells them, I'm going to write a letter. I'm going to help you. I'm going to support you. I want you to go back to the church. At the same time, the pastor becomes sick. Very, very sick. Close to die. So Paul, okay, fine. I better send you now. Ends the letter, gives it to him, sends it. There's a second person here who is from the church also. He's a slave. And that slave, he sees nothing to escape. And he goes far away, and it happens, he meets Paul in Rome. And Paul is concerned about your soul. You are an escaped slave person? Oh, you should stay and serve your boss. But now the slave, he says, no, no, my bad boss, he, he abuses me, he happens, he hurts me. Oh, I don't want to get back to him. Paul oh, asks, he says, your boss a Christian. Does he go to church? Oh, yes. His pastor's name is Oh, really? So Paul says, huh? Paper, pen, I'm going to write a letter to your boss, okay? You accept Jesus Christ yourself, and you become a servant of Him, Jesus. And I'm going to let him, I'm going to give you, and you bring it to your boss, and you tell him, Paul warned you, you don't abuse him, and you show him because your brothers in Christ. So the slave, you know, okay, I hope it works. So he travels and he lies, and he shows the letter to the pastor, maybe, and he shows the letter to the boss. Finish now. Full church, they read the letter. A brother in Christ, a brother in Christ, you two can serve together. A boss, a slave, a brother. But Paul here now, he's staying in jail. He knows he's gone. He's gone. Finished. Those two men, he finished face to face. He met those two only. But full list, who's in the church? Not yet met. The Colossians chapter 2, verse 2, he tells about that. Related with, I want to see their hearts become. Yeah, uh, I want to see who, I don't know, but I want to love from far away. Love, see. Yeah. First Peter chapter 1, verse 8 tells, you finished, not yet seen. You love who you love without saying Jesus. That's right. Because you've not yet met Jesus Christ. Same as Paul. Remember, Paul only met through bowing down and being blinded. He would not really physically hugged with Jesus, not yet touched him, not smelled him, not heard his voice, except from heaven. He had not here in the earth, not yet experienced that. Same as you. You have not yet experienced that. So you love without seeing who you now believe. You rejoice with joy without seeing. Full of glory. Now that is Todd. He tells me Hebrews chapter um, 11, tells me verse 6, that we have faith is required for pleasing God. Without faith, possible. He's got Hebrews chapter 11 or 6. That's right. Now, without love, it's also not possible. He's got. And God is telling, now, you have not yet met Jesus yourself in person. Not yet. But you trust God's word. You believe the gospel. Recently, you've celebrated with drinking the, the grape juice and remembering the blood of Jesus Christ. You never saw the crucifixion yourself. But you believe the Bible that tells the story about his blood for those of you. And you love him for that. And you see soon, next month, we'll go ahead and we'll celebrate again. And we'll have bread set up and we'll have the cup set up next month again. 
And that time period, we'll remember, and we'll look back and we'll see Jesus' beautiful body broken for the Lord's sacrifice of love. And we'll eat the bread again, and we'll drink the cup again, and we'll remember, and we'll look back, and we'll continue to love Jesus Christ for that, because we've not yet met him, but we finished the body. Now, these two sister churches, same idea. We have a church here 10 miles, over here another church 10 miles. Long ago, people would stay local community up until they died. They didn't travel up here and travel over there, no. They didn't have a car. Poor people didn't have a donkey or a horse. They didn't have. So they would stay and stay and stay and not yet meet here. But those two church had not yet developed this relationship. Now tonight, we're going to go to San Jose. Some people will join, some people will stay, that's fine. But we're going to go and we're going to meet people we don't know. People that are hearing, people that don't know sign language, but people who really, they pay and they pay $100 a month for support the church because they love the okay. And so now tonight when we go, Maybe I'll call and say, Ebro, you come. I want to do short, short, one minute, two minute, short. And then he can stand there and he can explain about what's happening with him. And then I interpret and voice, help him, the people are hearing me go, oh, Ebro, we know him. We're here now. Up and now we pray for him because Pam sends a letter and explains we have a student from Africa. We send a picture, maybe a cash, send an email, but not yet me, really. Person here, up until now, we love you, but really, no one is here. So we have an opportunity now to develop that relationship. Faith is without seeing. Not yet seeing means trust. I know without seeing. We have wedding, right? <laughs> Okay, here, when first engage, okay, we go ahead, and the man doesn't yet have a ring, right? The woman receives first, the promise, right? Yeah, in, in, in American culture. Okay, so the man, he goes ahead to the store, and he, he asks, how much are you going to charge me? What size diamond do you have? Okay, my $2,000 diamond. Okay, five, five, eight. Now I'm Ready? Okay, I got it. You don't mind wedding with me in the future, okay? I have promised you I'll be loyal, I love you, fine. Go ahead. Uh, oh, now, the woman herself gives back the ring now? No, we're good, we're Not yet, not yet, right? So now I wait one year, two year, okay, we schedule the wedding. Two years and a half will happen soon. On the wedding day, Kenyatta shows up. Now, I hope we have ring ready, right? So the wife, she will come. She has ready the ring. I have a second ring ready. Okay, so I have both. One just pure gold, one the other is kind of okay. Now, promise. Waiting without seeing. I know one year, two years, not yet see the ring, not yet. But promise. We agree together, the wedding will happen, the ring will arrive. Two years and a half arrives today.
without prayer, we're not showing sure faith. Number two. Okay, you know you have thread, your clothing, okay? And so you see, oh, I have a line here, so I need to fix it. See? And you fix it, right? So knit. Knit. Now, knit at the wedding, you have three areas to counsel. Okay, first, you tell the couple, God's word in the book of Genesis tells them, you must leave your father. Live at home, okay? Now, first step, Adam and Eve, it says to the left. Okay? Now, the second step is to leave. That means to come yeah. together. Okay? Now, there's a physical coming together in a sexual relationship, yes, but there's also a spiritual coming together because the husband becomes the person responsible to leave the wife. And the wife becomes responsible to help and support the husband. So they become complete together. Yeah. Now that word is really the same concept as glue. So you know that glue, glue, stick, Ooh, stay. Now, husband and wife sometimes want to disagree, but God is putting them together. You can't, right? Not possible. Because it's going to be connected together. Wrap together. Together. Good. That second word leads to a third, which we call the Right. So it's the same idea as stitching, but you have more lines. So it becomes like this. Okay, so it's up and down, up and down, okay, up and down, up and down. So, okay, that's called leaving. Now, what happens? God finishes, tells man and woman, you leave the parents, leave. Second, you plead together. But now your lives are becoming be together because God is going to stitch now. Yeah. One and one, two people become one together. And so God's plan with one side here becomes the other side and they match become one. Now that is an interesting thing because what you see happening is that you have here, for example, Cam. I grew up in a farm background. I grew up in a town with maybe 600 people. Benyatta, she grows up in Chicago with 5 million people. She grows up in a Catholic school. I grew up here, except Jesus Christ, at 7 years old. She grows up, except Jesus Christ, about 17. Now, we meet. Her culture is the same as my culture. <laughs> Different, right? Different. Her culture, city, black, gang culture, right? My culture, farm, cows, horses, scooping up poop from animals. Okay, that's my culture, okay? <laughs> she never. Oh no! Call the police. Call someone to help. Okay, right? Different culture, right? That God not Himself puts together, leaving, and you recognize when God touches the heart for me to serve deftly. I ask you, you learn sign language. I'll go to college, go study, become a tripper. Who wins to be first? <laughs> and God, God gives speed. She finishes, win degree, become a professional interpreter. Fine. First. God himself knew that person. Yeah, Jesus. 
education. We have now God knows also he had a room to come. Okay? So she nearly graduates two years to study to become an interpreter. Samuel's both sides. Perfect time, right? You found finish, right? Now, will Samuel will he match with the deaf church? God knows. So God knows he gives us the right match. A person who is skilled with computer can set up for daddy help with the computer. Objection, right? Okay. God knows. So he's stitching, he's he's weaving together the family for his goals, right? Same over here, there's a rug, uh, a rug on the, the floor that Amir, he gave the church. Okay? And if you see the front there, it has some pictures that are very complicated from like uh, Iranian uh, Persian culture there. But if you have the back, you flip it up, you go, that is weird. The back is not clear, right? <laughs> Two churches, the church here, the church here. Okay. Separated 10 miles, okay? Yeah. Sister churches. Now, maybe not yet that. But Paul is doing it. The same as God. If you've not met him, but you love God, you should be loving that not yet. Them. So for example, 
Paul had written a letter before, he spread it to all the churches, please send money to support the church poor in Jerusalem, right? There was one church that responded and sent money to them. Not a lot. Okay? Now here we see in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, and you finish, know, believe that love, God, finish, show us. God is love. Who lives in love, lives in God. God. You have love for a sister church over there. Your church sister over there loves that. You shun sister church. Tell them, sorry, we're not helping you. That shows the love. Go. Of Boom! Be careful. That kind of testimony really hurts the world to you. Because the world sees one church. We don't want that. We don't want that. And then God's love comes above to the word knit together. Picture husband and wife, family growing together in the grace of God. Also, the church becomes a picture to the world. Because the church shows when we love another hearing church then we show the world it's not about deaf church better than hearing church, not about hearing church worse than deaf church. No, it's about two churches without the same sign language. Their church, English, hearing, speaking, our church, I seeing, not English, sign language. Okay? So we have now shown to the world that we can have, and that's right. Hey, we have we have a list. We know Brad Kettleman's church from the Lake, right? So we know them. We love them. Okay? We have pictures of them over there. We have a sister church in Salt Lake City. We've not yet met them, but we love Mark. We love LP. We love their daughter, Sarah. And really, we should be loving their church as well. So we see now we have these different people who belong with the church and we love their church as well because the hearts are Third. In John chapter 13, verse 35, not yet read, you can mark it down and go home. It tells through this, people know that you are my true disciples if you love them. Right? So you can mark that down. But thirdly, we have knowing, 100% sure knowing in our heart about Christ. So now we have our last verse here, related to Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. So remember, we're proceeding through arriving at the goal, Colossians chapter 2, verse 3.
Okay? But these two, the man and the woman, they finish the sentence. They want to show love to Who was the best man in the wedding here? Him. Yeah. They called me. Called me. Him, you Christian, okay, come sit with us at the table. Honor. Chopsticks. Wow, what I do? <laughs> I don't know. Now, Samuel, he's skilled with that. Fine. Because he grew up with. Japanese, Korean, Chinese, here, uh, California has plenty, right? But I grew up where? Well, I'm not <laughs> I've never touched that food. We eat meat from cows. We drink milk from cows. We <laughs> eat the grown things, the corn. We don't eat rice. What is this? Rice is not my culture. I don't know that. Uh, okay. God, 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 God. Yeah. So now they call me. White person to sit here. Yeah. A man, white person. We have the woman here. The best woman too. But because she has a Korean sister in Christ. So all the table in the front are Christian. Very expensive of all Christian food. Okay, now, here, the Korean people, they have their alcohol. Strong. The Japanese people, they have their alcohol. Strong also, right? The Christians have their alcohol. Strong. Colossians chapter 1 or 2, verse 3, tells in the room of him all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus Christ has enough knowledge to help you every day with your assurance, with the rest of the world. Hello. I'm going to pull because time is running out, but one last verse, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. 11, verse 2. Yes, I see. I see. That's why I pulled. Okay. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. See, this list here tells 
included in him, that person will have a match with all wisdom and knowledge. You and I sometimes meet people who think you can show them Jesus one in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, two, and three, they can show them Jesus in the Christ. And when you open up and show from Jesus Christ, people go, oh, I understand. That's true. Let's see it really. Let's read the New Testament. These two places. Um, Jesus. Okay. So I encourage you, this week, first step, we talk about praying to fight false doctrine. Right? The second step is having this idea of a changed mind. The changed mind doesn't matter. He will show openly the love of Jesus Christ to the church, to the brothers and sisters, and to the Jesus Christ. Okay, come on. Let's collect for you. <laughs>